Photorealism might seem easy to achieve with PBR textures, but there's a lot more to it. In this video, I'll not only guide you through setting up these textures, but also show you how to fix some major problems. And to make things even easier, I'll be giving away some free assets later in the video. So stick around because they'll definitely come in handy. Before we begin, if you don't know what PBR textures are or how they work, physical based rendering textures are like a set of images in which each image carries specific information about the texture. For example, this is how a PBR texture looks like. You will find a lot of images with different names like diffuse, normal, roughness and more. So now you will be thinking, why do this hard work when you can just take a wood image from the internet and stick it on a plane? That will not give the same result. The reason why PBR textures give good results is because it can determine how light will behave when it will hit the texture. Let me take you through the texture maps. The albedo or diffuse texture tells the color of the texture. This is evenly lit unlike the images you find online. The roughness map tells where the texture has to reflect more or less light. The metallic has the same reason. The normal and bump map fakes the details which adds this 3D effect in the textures. The displacement map also adds details but these are generated by manipulating the mesh. All other maps have their own property but these were the main ones. PBR textures are really easy to find and you can find good ones for free. The best two places I use are Polyhaven and Ambient CG. You have to extract the zip file and you can use WinRAR for that. Theory can only take you so far so let's move towards the practical stuff. You can either add every texture map in the principal BSDF node or you can use a free add-on that already comes with Blender that can automatically add all of textures for you. I'm going to explain this step by step. First, you have to enable the add-on. For that, go over here and click on the Edit tab. Down here, you will find Preferences. Open that and go into the Add-on tab. Search for Node Wrangler and check the box. Now, click this menu and save the preferences. After that, select your mesh and open the Shader Editor in any of the windows. You can also drag a new window for the Shader Editor. Click New Material and select the Principal Shader. Press Ctrl, plus Shift, plus T and select the textures you downloaded. This will be the basic setup, but there are more things that you need to know. First, you will notice that there will be some issue with the quality of the texture. Even if it's 4K, you will face the same issue. This is due to the bump map. If your texture doesn't have the bump map, you won't get this problem. To fix it, change the bump strength to 0.1 or just delete the whole bump map and connect the normal node into the principal node. The second issue that you will face is that the details will be 2D rather than 3D. This is because the material is not using the displacement map. Before using the displacement map, know that displacement manipulates the geometry and it can only work if your mesh has subdivision. You can either subdivide your mesh or use a subdivision modifier. Note that your PC will divorce you if you make the subdivisions too high. Go to the materials tab, scroll down and you will find the settings tab. Change this to bump and displacement. There is also another way to use displacement maps. You can remove the displacement node and add a displace modifier, copy these settings, select the displacement texture, and you are good to go. The only downfall is that you cannot scale the texture from the shader editor, and you have to manually scale the UV and edit mode. Why this is useful is because it shows displacement in the viewport, which can come in handy, because sometimes things can fly very high. Let's take it one more step further. You can make these materials more photorealistic. If you add micro details, this comes in handy if you are rendering close-up shots. I have tried scattering icospheres as tiny rocks, but they don't work for me. What I do instead is use masks like these to create dust and other micro details. I have made an asset pack for you guys which contains some micro details. Not only that, I have also added the hair modifier, which can add tiny hair to objects. You can get the free version from my Patreon and the premium version is free for those who have the Patreon subscription. Plus you will get some project files that will help you. Another thing that is most common is the tiling issue. Your texture will repeat and look bad. This doesn't matter if you are using something like wood because they are supposed to be repeated. But if you are trying something like mud, it will look terrible. There are a lot of ways to fix this, but the one method that I use, which I found by accident, 
just add a Voronoi texture here and plug this into the location, this creates random patterns which randomizes the texture and makes it look natural. Not only that, you can also generate textures from images. This website can generate the normal and other maps for your image. Now here is a recap. PBR textures are a set of textures in which each texture has its own property. You can get textures from Ambient CG and Polyhaven. You can set the textures with the Node Wrangler add-on, which comes with Blender by default. You have to select the principled BSDF and click Control plus Shift plus T and select the textures. To fix the quality issue, reduce the bump strength. To use displacement, change the setting to bump and displacement and add some subdivisions. You can finalize it with micro details that you can get from my Patreon. If you liked the video, make sure to check out my Patreon and try out the Forest Generator. It's free.